the feet. And another one is uh, under there also. I didn't, I haven't been to Salps for a long time. And they're all different expansions of Lakshmi having different purposes. Who it's mostly, uh, sometimes who can be Jiva Tattva empowered, getting a particular uh, access to, to the very intimate pastimes of the Lord. So that's all I can recollect now. It is different expansions of Lakshmi, having different serving position. Send me an email, I'll give you details if you really want. They're just different expansions of Lakshmi. Okay. Where can I get to this one? Well, what did I say now? Huh? What did I say? You didn't listen. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Eight o'clock. Okay, so Nitanga, Nitanga. <clears throat> Thank you. 
um, so what did we discuss last time? Any points? Yes, please. Okay, who remembers the offenses? Wait a second, one second, one second. Give, give, give the chance to others. Everybody knows the 10 offenses? Okay, anybody else? Huh? 10 offenses? Chanting? No? Yes, you know? I just, I'm just asking yes or no. You say yes or no. All, all of them. You don't know all of them. I mean, it's like, I don't know what, cooking. No? Cooking. Cooking. You have to know what to do, and you have to know what not to do. No? Everything is like this. Everything in life is like this. You have to know what you're supposed to be. Everything is yam and niyam. Things to be done, things to be avoided. Everything in life is like this. If you don't, if you just say, I know what to do, you think that's enough? It's not good enough. I just say, I know how to cook. <laughs> then let's see what happens after you finish your cooking. <laughs> Will that be offerable to Krishna or no? Most unlikely. <laughs> Most unlikely. It's not just enough, I know what to do. Because there are many things that we're not supposed to do. I remember once there was one, uh, there was some devotees trying to do some cooking, and they were mixing all kinds of, I won't mention things, but it's like they're mixing all kinds of funny things, and there was disaster. I mean, it was like, <laughs> it was disaster. But the taste was really <laughs> unbearable. <laughs> That's not offerable to Krishna. <laughs> because they didn't know what not to do. You cannot mix certain things. One has to be cautious of proportions. One has to be cautious of uh, combinations, definitely. Uh, so many things are involved. So when we talk about chanting, we know, yes, we just chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Very nice, but it's not good enough. It's not sufficient because holy name is a person. Who's that person? Krishna. Krishna. So Krishna likes some things and Krishna doesn't like some things. So we also have to be very cautious what we do when we also chant the holy name, or even when we are not chanting the holy name, that also makes a big impact on the holy name. That means on Krishna. So we should know what we should do and what we should not do. So we should learn these ten offenses. I I, I don't know if I I guess I must have requested that you all learn these ten offenses. Yeah. So so who who did the homework? Nobody likes homework. So should we learn now on the class? <laughs> should we learn now to try to memorize the ten offenses? That's what I tried to avoid last time because you know it will be, you know, everybody would think, oh, it's too too much now, too heavy. Okay, who remembers at least one thing that we should not do? At least one. Yes. We should not do all things. Okay, that's a very important one. We should not do sinful activities, commit sinful activities, and then think, yes, then I will chant Maha Mantra, and then all this will become nullified, erased. That's very important. So this we should not do. We should not take the holy name as a doormat, you know, for our you know, dirty feet or whatever. So we should be very cautious. That should not happen. Very important. Very important thing to avoid. Yeah. It's like some people think, yes, I will I can I can let's say eat anything and then I will take medicine, everything will be fine. But sometimes it happens, even you take medicine, it doesn't work. No. So okay.
Okay, what is another one? Yes. Should we should be attentive while chanting? That's the most important. We should be attentive because inattentiveness is cause of all the other offenses. I mean, I, I'm kind of I, I have some. Hmm. Some kind of uh, resistance towards this, this discussion. But since you don't know, then we have to go through it. I think we can relish, we can hear some pastimes, we can hear some activities of Chitnya Mahaprabhu and so forth. But these basic things, if we don't know, but then what's the use of hearing? No. Then we won't get proper perception, neither we'll get proper benefit from this. We have to go back to the basics because. Anytime, anything, this is, maybe you can note this down. It's a very simple point, but very powerful point. Anytime you don't feel attracted to Krishna consciousness, you don't have taste for Krishna consciousness, you don't feel attracted by Krishna consciousness, what do you have to do? You have to go back to, back to the basics. What are those basics? What is the foundation of spiritual life? Shravanam Vishnu Smaranam, <laughs> Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam. Basic is, basic rules, we should follow certain principles, have some essential sadhana, rising early, chanting in the morning, here in Bhagavatam class, trying to do some service, following the principles. These are just basics. So if we are losing taste, that means we are lacking some. We may, you know, we may go way far in the spiritual practice, but still, if something is wrong, that's something wrong with foundation. So then, that there is the expression going back to the basics. So same thing now. If we have troubles in the spiritual life, we are losing taste, we're gaining interest, we're not feeling enthusiasm. That means there's something wrong with our chanting. We might be even chanting, but then if something is wrong, that what is that wrong? That means we are committing offenses. We are committing offenses. And holy name, holy name, holy, you know, Nam Prabhu is a person, it's Krishna. And uh, of course, he's our eternal master. Shivaram Swami, he wrote one, of course, he wrote many books, but he gives one very interesting analogy. He says it's just like a king who has a servant as an employer. And servant is performing various kinds of duties and so forth. He's doing many things. He's very reliable in many ways. But sometimes it so happened the servant got a little bit carried away and covered by Maya and whatever, and he stole something. He stole something that, you know, was discovered that he did it. And then what happened, the king now, he didn't, you know, fire him. He didn't said, I don't want to have you anymore as a servant, but he lost the confidence of the king. He lost the trust. He lost the, you know, that intimacy with the king. So this is like when we commit this offenses towards Krishna. We lose Krishna's attention, we lose Krishna's you know, mercy. We lose a lot by that. We are still, Krishna is still merciful, he's keeping us in his service, you know, because he knows without being in his service, what would our state be even worse, you know. So the servant is still there, so he can get his maintenance, he can you know, still whatever, be involved in uh, <clears throat> service to the king, but the relationship, it's not the same. So that's something that, 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 that we lose that. So now we have to build that trust again, that we can, we can serve and uh, master can have, or king can have a lot of confidence in us and he can trust us again. So that's what we have to do. So when we commit offenses, then we lose that potency, that we lose that mercy and we lose that connection, that kind of connection. So now Holy Name is just waiting, Krishna is waiting, at which point, again, we are going to develop interest for Him, we are going to become subservient, we are going to desire 
to please Krishna. So when that slowly, slowly happens, then the holy name of Krishna slowly, slowly again starts reinstating us to our original position. So we should not commit offenses, then we lose that trust, we lose that confidence, we lose the mercy. You know? So we, we have to know what those offenses are. We have to know what to steal or what not to steal. No, no that's not. We should not steal at all. <laughs> yeah. That's the, the we, not, we have to know what is it that we are not supposed to do. It's not just we are chanting, that is very nice, but then also aside, there are things that we should not do. We should be very clear with it. It's just we just have to, you know, when you close your eyes, you have to see all these 10 offenses, 11. You know, you have to have that, that uh, that's called photographic memory. You have to impress that in your mind. 10 offenses, first one, to the second, to the third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You have to know these 10 offenses. Otherwise, how are you going to advance in spirituality? It's going to be difficult. Like Shla Prabhupada said, it's just like you're trying to light the fire, right, and we're pouring water. It's not going to work. So we have to know how to light the fire and keep the fire growing. So somebody came the other day, they came from Uttarakhand. They said there is a place where Lord Shiva and Parvati married. And they keep eternal fire growing there. They have a service. Huh? There, there are some temples like this. I heard some other places are there also. So they keep fire growing and, <laughs> and they're fueling it. And so in spiritual life also, that's that's what we should do. We should never stop. It's a responsibility, it's not an easy task. Because once you stop, of course. They taught that primitive people sometimes in old ages, they, 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 when the thunder would strike and they would get fire, so they're very, very cautious, they would keep this fire <laughs> so they can use the fire. <laughs> it doesn't matter, fire has to grow. It's just an analogy. So in the spiritual life, the fire of bhakti has to keep on burning. If it doesn't burn, chanting doesn't work. If either you chant or listen to the class. That's another offense. We're talking about offenses. That's why I'm straightforward here. Yeah. It's not going to work. Either you chant, either you listen to the class, otherwise you're making offense to both to Jaini Chaitamita and to the Holy Name, and that's like disaster, absolute disaster. Krishna consciousness. So that's the first thing one should know. Second offense, no, I'm joking. That's like... <laughs> okay, so who knows the offenses now? Who can recollect under such pressure that I hopefully gave it in the last few minutes? Okay, yes. How many you know now? Seven, eight. That's pretty good. Okay. And last time, did we share? No, we, we had something. We said that, you know, they were all listed. Everybody should take a snack yeah. or something. So, so, so by what's the use being in the group? You know? It should be in the mind. It should Always, every moment, we should keep on recollecting what are the things that we're not supposed to do. Okay, one we have, one we heard. That's the seventh one. That's number seven. Huh? Everybody else here knows? Okay, you said you know how many? Akashach, how many you know? Disaster. Ten. Ten. <laughs> Okay, what's the, let's go by order, because if you go by order, then it's easy, easier to memorize. If you keep on skipping this one, that one, then you might not know which, which one you skipped, which you didn't. Really, you have to learn this. I know, I, I, that's why I said, I, I, I was trying to avoid this last time. Because it might seem like, you know, too boring maybe, or too much, you know, too dry, or, you know, now we have to memorize things that we're not supposed to do. That's, you know, that's not so, such an interesting class or whatever. But you have to do that. If you're not doing it at home, then you have to do it here. As I said, it's a foundation. You lose the mercy of Krishna. I don't want to lose mercy of Krishna doing something that it's not good for us, actually. Krishna doesn't mind, but it's not good for us. <clears throat> What's another major one? 
Okay. No, no, that's another. That's a different. Wait, wait. They're all different. That's the eighth one. To consider the chanting of the holy name to be one of the ritualistic activities mentioned in the Karma Kanda section of the Veda. That's number eight. So to think that chanting Hare Krishna will give us some piety, will give us punya, dana, this, that, so many different. So that's that's not what the holy name is meant for. Maybe those things will happen as a, some kind of side benefits, fringe benefits, as they call them. You may get that, but that's not the main goal of chanting Hare Krishna. By chanting Hare Krishna, we want to gain Krishna Prem. So we should not think it falls, and then it becomes subservient. I'm, I'm doing chanting Hare Krishna, and therefore Krishna has to give me what I want. I cannot order Krishna or, or, or force Krishna. So that's not the holy name. It doesn't work like that. And you may chant, who? This is heavy. This will come here in Chitin Chaitanya. It said you can chant for millions of lifetimes <laughs> and not get a result of chanting. It's so powerful that just by once chanting Hare Krishna Mama, you, become, you can become liberated. But if you don't have proper con, you don't have 10 offenses. <laughs> you don't have 10 offenses. And you're committing those offenses. You may chant for millions of lifetimes. No use. I mean, some use will be. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> That's okay, but in the course of time, we'll get to know them so well that we will, you know, be reminded by Krishna's mercy that, hey, yeah, we should not do this. We should not do this. But at least we should know the ten offenses. And I said last time, okay, you don't want to know them in a negative way, but then find out, I mean, or just reverse them. You know, just do them, do them in the positive way. What you're not supposed to do, then, you know, just do it. Okay, like, Okay, we heard, uh, now we had, had seven, that means we should not commit sinful activities in the strength of the holy name, holy name will just purify, yeah. and we can keep on, you know, being in the sin, so that's not a good idea, we heard the eighth one, you know, eighth one, she said eighth one, that means consider that it's karma kanda, you know, <clears throat> chanting and then hoping for some material benefit. We heard the interpretation, right? You said interpretation. So that means mundane interpretation. You can have spiritual interpretation, which is mentioned in the scriptures, what the holy name means, but some mundane interpretation. For us, actually, it's better not to give any interpretation. Let's take holy name, what Shla Prabhupada said, Radha Krishna and Ramachandra, whatever, or Radha Rama, whichever. I mean, there, of course, you can, depends how you want to, in which mood Bob one wants to chant, but better not to interpret. Or maybe thinking that it means this, the holy name means that, and one will gain this, and one will get that. Someone has to be cautious about speculating on that holy name. Okay, what else? Blast, that's the first one. That's the most common one we commit. And we heard about inattentiveness already also. So blaspheming the devotees, that means finding some faults. We all have faults. We all have faults, so we should be conscious of our own faults before we, you know, seek or look for mission that we shouldn't do that, of course, but before we try to find faults in others. So we should not blaspheme devotees. If that's not our position, so if you're in management, and let's say like, like mother and uh, children or something, it's mother's duty to correct find the fault. So it's a guru's duty to find the fault, to correct the cycle, to make him, to help him to advance, to point to something that is preventing his advancement. So if we are not in a position, then we should not criticize. Just uh, for sake of making ourselves better than, or thinking that we are better than someone else, or for whatever other reason. We have that very, very negative tendency to find fault in others. So we should not do this. <clears throat> that's an offense. That's that's a very serious offense, criticizing devotees. So we should not do this. Okay, what else? Okay, to consider demigods to names to be equal or independent of Krishna. 
So then you're minimizing Krishna. So what's the positive of that? Always glorify Krishna. No? And understand that He is the Supreme. And instead of blaspheming devotees, then what do we do? We glorify devotees. Find something good. Yes? That's a very important one. Disobey the orders of spiritual master. Very, very important. What the Guru says we should follow. If you don't follow, then because he will say, but again, it's Shastra is saying and what Krishna is saying. So if we don't follow this, yeah, like some, sometimes some devotees earlier he would say, oh, Prabhupada, we love you and we follow you. But, you know, you set up the governing body, management, we won't, we won't follow. People said, no, no, <laughs> you know, it's like, how does that work? <laughs> Prabhupada said, you follow them, and they said, no, we won't follow them, but we'll follow you. So where does that lead? <laughs> so it doesn't make sense. So, so that's why Guru said something we should follow. If you don't obey, then that's an offense to the holy name. Sometimes it may happen, you know, we we may not exactly be able to execute the order of the Guru. Like, like Shla Prabhupada received instruction, go to the West and preach. No. But Prabhupada didn't reject that instruction. It just took him some time. He was always meditating how, and it was such a big instruction, of course. Nobody else thought it would be, ever be possible. Prabhupada didn't reject it as impossible. That's why Prabhupada was different than anybody else. He didn't think it's impossible. He acted on that and he tempted so many times. He tried, but he never rejected the, 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 the instruction. So we should never disobey. Even if sometimes we are unable to follow, okay. Hopefully in the future we should see how to work it out. <clears throat> okay, what else is left? To blaspheme the scriptures. Yes, that's the fourth one. So that doesn't mean that. You know, we offer respect to all the Shastra and we keep them nicely and, uh, you know, just giving respect like this or something. No. That means one should also follow what the Shastra says. And what does Shastra say? You may say, I'm, I'm a very nice, pious person. I come to temple and this and that. But again, if you don't take initiation from the Guru, then you're not following the Shastra. That means you're blaspheming the Shastra. So that means also you have to follow Guru, you have to follow Shastra. Otherwise, it's an offense. So you cannot say, I don't know what is in Shastra, but you should read what is in Shastra. If you have so much respect for the scripture, then you should know what is in the scriptures and what scripture is saying that we should do, what human life is meant for. So that's what should be followed. We already said another offense. Last time we discussed, what was that? Yes, intimate glories of the holy man. That's the ninth one. One is left. Now we said all of them. One is one is left. Huh? What? What? Raise your hand. Okay. Faith, no, no, I mean, maybe, but more precise. Yes, what, which one is left? Huh? <laughs> I saw it like this. Yeah. It's so puzzling that you have to. You know. Okay, which one is left? Yes. <laughs> That's the tenth one. Okay, you were right. Okay, I apologize. Okay, fine. Huh? Oh, that's a very important one also. No, no, that's the tenth one. No, wait about fifth one. Here on ten. <laughs> what a, what does that mean, material attachments? You all know what that might mean, material attachments. 
maintaining material attachment, something that has nothing to do with Krishna. And you heard it's not good, it's entangling me more in material life. And I keep on chanting, okay, that's fine, but I'm not giving up material attachments. It's like, okay, I want, I want to go down the river, but I anchor the boat. Everybody knows the story of marriage story in West Bengal. Anyway, what? Story about the big, big festival. And the part, one party had to go to another village and they usually use the boat, you know, transport. Because so many rivers are there, it's faster, easier. And then, then calculated that, you know, if you leave at night, then in the morning we will reach. And the boatman was rowing, rowing, and everybody was singing, and everybody was so jubilant. And then they fell asleep. And the boatman was rowing, rowing, rowing. In the morning, for, mid, you know, first dawn, you know, rays of the sun, and, and then one person woke up and said, hey, we are still on the same place. And the boatman said, how is it possible? Whole night I've been working so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then they figure out, Oh, we didn't remove the anger. <laughs> and the whole marriage party was ruined. They didn't come on time. Because the muhurta was missed. <laughs> <laughs> so we may be chanting, chanting, but we keep on <laughs> holding on material attachments. And then moving anyway. You may be rowing very hard, but not much benefit. So what are material attachments? Uh, and if some of you, out of your own experience, please share it with others. <laughs> <laughs> At least some minor ones. Huh? Okay, family, even Queen Kunti, she said, my dear Krishna, please you know, relieve me from family attachment. That's a pretty heavy, that's in Bhagavad. Maybe that we can discuss when we discuss Bhagavad. So that's pretty. Pretty strong statement. I mean, it's like, and who were family members of Queen Kunti? All the Pandavas and everybody. And still, she's saying, please let me just be focused on you, Krishna. Let, there is no hindrance in that because of my family attachment towards you. That's pretty heavy. Ah, yes. Phone. Okay, yes. So many things on mobile phone. Actually, everything is on mobile phone. You know, before you would have so many other things, you know. <laughs> now there's everything is there. <laughs> there's no need of other attachments for you. All of them are mobile. Money, maybe, yes. So don't be so attached. Jagannatha Theatre is coming. <laughs> Contribute something. <laughs> okay, what else? Yes, some some certain position might be there, some expectation. Yeah, well, that's pretty easy. There. So now we are getting to something subtle. There are many gross things, there are many subtle things. We don't even perceive. Anyway, okay, but this gives us some idea now. There's so many things we are still attached. We shouldn't, because anything that has no connection to Krishna will bring us back to will bring us back to material world, will bring us back into another body. We shouldn't maintain material attachments. So then the holy name will not have so much effect because we cultivate materialism. Okay, so what's the fifth one? Last one. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, don't read. Don't, yeah. Okay. okay, so the potency of the holy name is so powerful. We shouldn't consider this to be imagination. There's an incredible potency. Of course, we said you can chant for millions of lifetimes, but yeah, we shouldn't commit offenses. But the, pot but the potency is as such, it's, it, it, it's, it's sincerely we call out to Krishna. What is the, like like we hear here in Chaitanya Chaitanya, that's going to come later, the story of Jaga and Madhav. They were so simple. They were doing all kinds of simple activities. So the Chitra Gupta, you couldn't, you know, Keep on, you know, keep the pace with writing, you know, how, how much sins they have done and how many things, you know, songs, everything they taught and did, everything was simple. Yeah. 
so so much simple but how did they get the mercy because they till that time they didn't commit Vaishnava from that point they didn't commit Vaishnava that's the first of this and of course they were not in touch with holy name or anything there was nothing like this so they didn't commit those offenses so they 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 became eligible as such to become liberated. So that's why the holy name has such an incredible potency that can eradicate any amount of sin in an instant. It said just like fire burns everything into ashes. So powerful. So we should not think that's imaginary. No, it's not imaginary. But we should rather have the faith that that's the case. And then Krishna can help us because we spoke the other day, sometimes some, some Wednesday earlier, I said uh, <clears throat> that just by chanting any problems that we are facing practically in life, if we just sincerely try, of course, I, I, I know that's not easy, I'm ready. but if we try, if we really try to focus and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Dama, Hare Dama, Everything can be purified. We can get all, all the taste, everything we need, everything we require, just by chanting. So we have to have faith in that, and we have to keep on endeavoring. You'll see, and you'll see practically what happens. Okay, so now we know 10 offenses. Yes? Who said voluntarily? It's not possible. Well, you have to do it voluntarily also. You can chant to give it up. You can you can ask Holy Name to help you, but you have to also voluntarily give up. If you're not how it, how it can be if you're still holding if you're voluntarily holding onto material attachments, then how will it be happen? Like this boatman story, they were chanting, everything was going on, but have to you have to remove. Who will not the holy name will remove the anger? <laughs> holy name will give you the taste that you can say, okay, this is better than what I've attached to. So then you can give it up. You have to give it up. Who else will give it up? You have to give it up. But what does that mean, giving up? Giving up doesn't mean leaving something. Giving up meaning uh, we have certain misconceptions about so many things. Okay, somebody said family or something. That doesn't mean giving up the family, but giving up that material consideration of family and relationships. So it, it, it doesn't, everything can be connected to Krishna, but we shouldn't remain attached from the position of our material benefit that's the point you know, i'm i'm benefiting in some ways that's why i'm attached that shouldn't be there you know, i'm 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 still part of something but then i can try to see how that what i'm attached to can be attached to krishna so that's a better consideration then let's say if you talk about family, I can say, okay, how can I purify my family by bringing them in touch with Krishna? Or how can I act more in Krishna consciousness so that they appreciate Krishna consciousness? Of course, there are extremes. If that's not the case, then it's better to give it up. But these are extremes. But in, in, in essence, it is possible to spiritualize something that we are attached. And then once it's spiritualized, then it's no problem. Then that attachment is not material attachment. And become spiritual attachment. Is that clear? Sure. Okay. Yes. But I often think about this point. He if we cannot do any progress, we even concentration is happening our child. So we fall. Then again, the next day also same thing, same same procedure happens and we fall. So it's a <coughs> process where we are following again and again. 
and I am also concerned about my family attachment. That I have accepted this fact that we are not this body, soul, accepted so many things after coming here, but still not getting detached with them. You said that ki, we should not be that detached, we should be living with them very happily and all and all. But we should be more uh, conscious towards Krishna consciousness that the detachment will all uh, follow by that. But I'm still not making a path here that what should I do because we will again fall, we will again fall. And the uh, biggest uh, offense is that we do inattentive chanting. So this is an endless process. Over like, yeah, it's created such a dilemma and attachment with the family. Like if one have a good family member, very supportive, very kind, very caring, like, a, like Krishna has uh, that uh, real constitution position with us. So it ought, it's all so, so that's So that's what I said, you don't have to leave. If you spiritualize, you don't have to leave it, it's spiritual. No, if you act in such a way that others are inspired also, then why would you have to leave? There's no need. So then all together you can keep on chanting and uh, becoming more attentive in that chanting or performing devotional service or focusing everything on Krishna. Who is the real master of the house? Any house? It's Krishna. It's Krishna. It's Krishna. You have to, you're supposed to have the altar and he's the real master. He's the main person. Everything should revolve around. So there's no there's no need to to, to uh, renounce anything. That we have to see how do we connect it to Krishna. That's the that's the process of spiritual life. You have to see how to connect. And as I said, well, it takes some patience. We, we we just started chanting practically, you know, and we think that immediately we can become pure devotees. It takes time. It takes time. It's not. It's not gonna happen immediately. You have to be ready for a little struggle. Krishna wants to see that you you really want him. It's, it's not cheap. Because what you gain by gaining Krishna, you gain everything. You can't even imagine what it means if we gain Krishna. So he's not making it a very easy process. In a sense that he didn't create the trouble of making it difficult. We, we were so entangled material that it's not so easy for us to become purified. So it, it takes little time because it, that's my point. Like, like, like I said, water and fire, fire and water. You know? We are still, due to our material attachments, we are deluding the potency of the whole thing. We are doing that. It's not that Krishna is doing this. That's the thing. That, that prevents us from progressing very fast. We are making difficult ourselves. So it is described like this. There are nine stages of bhakti. First four goes very slowly. Because that's, very, that's the cleaning process. That takes a lot of time. That the grossest cleaning of anartas takes a lot of time. So now, this process is described like this. And you can say we didn't even read the words, but anyway, we have to do this. And this process is described like this. It's just like, you know, first is Shraddha. First is Shraddha. That means little faith. You come here, you understand, yes, there is something there, there is some substance, there is something that is beneficial, good, attractive, whatever. Little faith. Then what? Sadhu Sangha. Now we are having some Sadhu Sangha. We are all associated together discussing about Krishna. Then Bhajana Kriya. How many of you are on the level of Bhajana Kriya? Bhajana Kriya means doing service regularly, doing some service. You have to think what, 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 what is it that I can do for Krishna? I mean, whatever you're doing, if you can do that also for Krishna, spend some time or whatever, that can be discussed later on. You have to start doing something for Krishna. That means becoming involved. And then anartami written. It's like, wow, this is the process now. By doing something for Krishna, becoming detached materially. 
and cleaning the lust, anger, greed, madness, envy, illusion. So that takes time. So how much time it takes? So the analogy is given. Let's say we are here in Mumbai. And where do we want to go? We want to go to Muscat. You know where is Muscat? Or Abu Dhabi or Dubai, whatever. You want to go to Gulf countries. So you start swimming. You start swimming. And uh, when you start swimming, then you reach to the certain point. And now, when you look back, you don't see Mumbai anymore. And you look forward, and you have no idea where you're going. <laughs> so now, is it making sense swimming back to Mumbai? Because you don't even know how much you, pass. you spend some days swimming or something. It's an analogy, anyway. Makes no sense going back really makes no sense. The one may as well, okay, let me just go forward. I can still go forward. So let me go forward. It might take time. I know it's going to take time. It's not going to be easy. Let me just go forward. So this is the stage, which is the most difficult stage. You have to go over that stage. You cannot say, okay, I, st I give up now. And then what? You just look down and it's like, what's the use? You can't give it up now. You have to go through that stage. But if you find it difficult, then you ask others, okay, help me. Help me. Somehow. Necessary. We are engaged in Krishna's service to the extent that the taste will resurface more and more. We said that analogy, right? You know that analogy. John, this analogy? No. We don't have taste because we are sick with an artist. No. So the more we take to the medicine of the holy name, the more we take to the sugar cane, no? sugar which is tasting bitter, the more the sweetness will resurface. So we have to keep on going. Now it might be a little more dry, but okay, what's the point of giving up? You have to go through that. There's no way around. There are no shortcuts in spiritual life. People always look for shortcuts. You look for a shortcut and you end up in bigger trouble. No? <laughs> Ever had that experience? <laughs> Once I was in some forest in Europe and I thought I'm going, I'm going to make some shortcuts. And then I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't but so much fun. Luckily, I came before evening. I somehow figured out. <laughs> it's not it. So I should be careful. If you don't know really where you are and where to go, you have to be cautious. So it, it's not easy. It, it, it might be difficult, but you know one has to keep on. So how do we know that we should continue? And we see examples who went through this. No? We see practical examples, devotees who have passed over that stage. And they have taste and they keep on going and they're enthusiastic and happy in Krishna consciousness. And, you know, we see. So we have to go to there. And how many examples in Shastra is that the case? But we can see practically. So attentively chanting whatever we keep on, we should keep on endeavoring. It's not easy. Can you imagine for billions and trillions and who knows how many lifetimes we had nothing to do with the Holy Name and we were focused on so many other things with our mind, it's filled and distracted by. And now within a few years, we think, oh yes, we will be fully focused on Krishna. That would be like, great, but it doesn't happen like that. But that means that we can see what is, actually, that would, that would be even greater impetus for us to understand, see how deeply conditioned we are and how much cleaning has to take place. So let's start somewhere. Let's do it. Let's not neglect this. So you say, okay, I won't clean. And then it, may just, it becomes worse. 
Let's just keep on going. Keep on chanting, no? Keep on endeavoring to be attentive. Keep on seeing how to do devotion service. How to come often to the temple. Even make it, make you behold the temple. Do something at home every day, offer some flower, I don't know, whatever, offer my special item, something, something, something. See how you can just be Krishna conscious. Or whoever is at home trying to somehow mm, give them some taste for Krishna consciousness, you can make that as one of the tasks of your devotional life. Whatever it might be. And see to which extent it works. Okay? So one should be. Patience is also a very important quality in spiritual life. Patience. Not being impatient. Utsaha Nishchayat Dariyat, Rupa Goswami says, it's very important. We should have enthusiasm, that's great. Utsaha, no. Nishchayat perseverance, perseverance, no. Being steady and patience. So steadiness, patience, and enthusiasm. All three are important. If you don't have one of those, then it will fall in different modes. If you have so much patience, but no enthusiasm in being steady, that's more of ignorance. <laughs> you do nothing. You have so much patience that you do nothing. So that's useless. If you have so much enthusiasm, you know, but then also you neglect other things, <clears throat> then it's more of passion. And you're just running, you, know, you have no idea what you're doing. It's like we say, fly without head. So, you know, that's crazy. But all the three together, oh, 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 we have a special guest this evening, big, big uh, Katankar every Monday. He's giving <laughs> Mahabharat, how they call them in the West, in, in the North. Is, uh... <clears throat> what are the ten offenses? <laughs> bolo, bolo. Now he's exposed. Okay. <laughs> he knows, he knows. I tested him earlier. I just, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, ha, no, no, let's focus. We, we have two, two seconds left. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, we have, to, we have to be patient. We have to be patient. Is that okay? Is that <laughs> yeah? And so, okay. Don't take this as an absolute uh, requirement. It's not necessary that one becomes detached. Yeah, it's less. Okay, fine. But but the point of less should be it should be more spiritualized. It should spiritualize it more. That's the point. It should not be on the material basis. If it's on the spiritual basis, there's no problem. Okay. Okay, anything else? What to do? We didn't read the book, but this is, you know, 10 offenses. You have to know the 10 offenses. Okay, so next Wednesday, we're going to know the 10 offenses. Everybody here? Okay, who doesn't know 10 offenses next Monday? We are closing the door. Seriously. <laughs> you can, I mean, uh, Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. Wait a second, wait a second. You know, there's going to be someone at the door, and you have to tell 10 offenses, then you can come to a class. <laughs> No excuse. Really. I mean, you have to. There's no way out. You cannot. You can, you can, you can have them written just in case if you, you, you can have excuse of maybe missing one or two. Okay. But you have to know. You really have to learn these 10 offenses. You have to do it. If you don't do like this, then when will you ever learn? You will never learn. It's so important. You have to know what you're not supposed to. How do you expect to advance in spiritual life if you do not this basics? You have to learn that. And then not so difficult. Practice. You have one week to practice now. That's only 10 lines, you know. Come for my. No, that's not. 
<laughs> okay, is that can we do that? Yes, who has trouble with this? Okay, meet me after the class who has trouble with this. Really, you should know next next Wednesday everybody should know so that we don't go to this discussion again. Of course, it's good to go, it's good to remind ourselves also. It's always we should actually recite them daily. Daily, there is a practice for Prabhupada established a practice every daily we recite what are the ten offenses. Should always be reminded, you should not do this. Even if you go sometimes mechanically through them, sometimes it will it will stick. Okay, yeah. Sometimes we will register, we should not do these things. Then maybe we should focus more. We can have a better chant. Okay, let, let's read the what what's the verse today? 41? 41? No? 49. What? 39. 39? 39, 41, which one is it? 40? Which one? Ah? 39, 40, that's left. Okay, let's just read at least today something and then have this discussion next time. Okay, I'll read 38. When the Lord desired to appear for another reason, the time for promulgating the religion of the age also arose. Thus, with two intentions, the Lord appeared with his devotees and tasted the nectar of prema with the congregation chanting of the Lord's name. Thus, he spread kirtan even amongst the untouchables. He bore the well, <coughs> breath of the holy name and prema, which he garlanded the entire material world. Okay, so that we discussed, no? Hare Krishna, Chitna Chaitamita Ki Jai, Prabhupada Ki Jai. Oh, something. Maybe you can.